What does a spy shark, a selfish elephant, and an exciting cloister have in common? Well, nothing, except that they were randomly generated and may never be seen again. Welcome to my review of The Simulacrum, a roguelite deck builder card game featuring procedurally generated cards with all kinds of overpowered stats and wacky gameplay effects. Stay tuned at the end of the review for some of my favorite randomly generated cards I've seen so far, and for full disclosure, I did receive my key for free from the developer. To begin, I'm going to jump right into the gameplay section, explaining both how the game plays as well as my thoughts on the feel of the game. The game plays like a standard card game. You have your deck size, your graveyard size, your mana pool, and your current hand of cards. Along the game board are the slots for your creatures that you cast as well as for your opponents. You also have a hero type unit similar to the commander system in Magic the Gathering. Each turn you can transmute up to one card here into your mana pool to create mana, and then you can play cards. Minions will be summoned in any order you like on the board, but will always attack from left to right, focusing the enemy's cards from left to right first. It's a pretty simple system that is almost like an auto-battler once you get the unit set up. If you're familiar with games like Magic the Gathering, Legends of Runeterra, or Hearthstone, you'll find this to be a much simpler interaction during combat. There is very little interaction once combat begins, apart from a few when attacking effects. You can't control if or what your units attack once they're down on the board. The AI is a bit dumb and a bit predictable, but you do have the option to play against a friend as of a recent update. The combat plays out in a fairly simple auto-battler style, with your units from left to right attacking enemy units from left to right. If there are no more blockers, they will hit your opponent's health instead, and reducing them to zero wins you the battle. I personally found during play that I was top decking a little more often than I would like or expect, as the only way to get more max mana is to sacrifice cards in your hand, meaning the end of a battle can be determined by the quality of the card you draw each round, rather than the strategy you put into playing and placing your cards. Now onto the cards themselves. The cards are crazy random, having all sorts of effects mashed together and a wild variation in stats. The clarity of keywords on the cards is very hit or miss. Some are easily explained by the descriptor on the right, while others use an almost programming-like language to explain how they work. And these ones will often give you a few moments of deep confusion while you try to work out what the heck they do. Because of this deep randomness, the game can end up very swingy, especially when you first start playing and you aren't sure what a decent distribution of stats and effects looks like. The five factions in the game follow a Magic the Gathering style approach, such as red sporting fast units and direct damage, and green summoning giant beasts and ramping up your mana very quickly. The faction balance does seem slightly off to me. I found white and purple to be the weakest and green and blue to be the strongest, but that just could be the result of how my decks were generated during my runs. However, despite my criticisms, it does feel really good to play this game and start a run to see what crazy cards you're going to get. I've laughed out loud a good number of times seeing the ridiculous names and effects tied to the art on the cards, and I've seen my fair share of battle-ruining bad cards and game-breakingly overpowered cards. No matter what way the luck swings, I was always excited to start a new run and see what absurd things I could find. Now for sound. The sound effects in the game are exceedingly simple. We're talking an attack sound, a mana generation sound, and a few other effects, and that's about it. There is a music slider, but for whatever reason, I never had any music playing at all. Now for graphics. The art for heroes and bosses was done by a person, but the card art was randomly generated using an AI. I would call the art in the game functional, but I can't really begrudge a very small indie dev using AI art for a game with a premise built around full procedural generation. The artistic cohesion is similarly lacking. You'll have a flaming elephant card on the board right across from an old man in a trench coat amongst derelict buildings, empowered by the vampire unit to his left and the flying shark to his right. Doesn't always go well together, but it is hilarious to see. In terms of story, there is basically none. There are bits and pieces here and there you can tell the devs sort of put in, but nothing concrete. It's more like a feeling you get from the different faction themes, though the procedural generation does blur those lines quite often. Why are sorcerers fighting scientists? Why is a cat going toe-to-toe -to -toe with an enormous dragon? Why are old men in a post-apocalyptic city battling squids and geese? Well, the answer is literally no reason at all. 
In conclusion, the simulacrum has a lot of issues with it, and a lot to warn against. But despite all this, I would wholeheartedly recommend this game if you're a fan of card games like Hearthstone, Legends of Runeterra, and especially Magic the Gathering. It's hilarious, wacky, quick, and extremely fun. It satisfies that deck building craving and the added knowledge that every run will be truly unique, featuring cards that no one will ever see again, really adds something special. If you like card games, roguelites, or even just wacky procedural generation, you should get this game because it's something special. Now, as promised, here are some of my favorite cards I've found through my playtime so far. Thank you for watching. Fiery Summon. Add a betraying, angry wizard to your hand. At the start of your turn, add its own health white spells to your hand that cost one. That's six. That's six spells. Disarming Scout Turtle. Drowning Goose. Exci <laughs> Goose Spy. That, th th that's a dog. Incinerating Bolt. Lose five life, then spawn two elephants. Betraying Alligator. When you discard a card, lose two life, then gain one life. Medium Dog. Breaking Alligator. At the end of your turn, mill six cards. The deck size is 30. <laughs> it's mill six cards. Empowering Mouse Ghoul. Oh my god, what is that? Pyroclysmic Bolt. Lose two life, then spawn three tigers. <laughs> cat Recluse. Recluse Cat. Insane Calling Ghoul. When this card attacks, sacrifice a unit. When you resurrect a unit, sacrifice another unit to summon a random unit from your deck that costs two more. Did you get all of that? Blazing Command. Deal the target's health in damage to that unit. If it dies, give all allied units plus two power. That's extremely overpowered. Here's some examples of randomly generated three mana cards. A 3-4 three, for three, a 4-4 four, four for three, and a 5-4 for three. Thank you everybody so much for watching this review. Go check out the Simulacrum on Steam. It's in early access right now, and it's only five bucks. Thanks again for watching.